So here, here we have the impact of the um, Grim Reaper Pro 3. The initial plate, it did not open. Let's keep flipping them. But on the second one, they were fully deployed. Third one, looks like not completely deployed for some reason. And there's the fourth one. Um, deployed, but not as big as the cut through the second plate. And then the last plate, just the tip went through. So there it is on the Grim Reaper Pro 3. Right here, we're gonna take a look at the, uh, the holes made by the Thorn Archery Mechanical and the Fire Knock Dagger. Here's Fire Knock Dagger, here's the Thorn. Let's go through the plates. Thorn did not open on the first plate, neither did it on the second plate. Of course, a uh, Fire Knock being a fixed blade, it's gonna have a consistent cut. We're, we're gonna check out the rotation of the dagger. There it is there. It's already starting to rotate. The thorn still does not have full blade deployment. Dagger keeps rotating. Still don't have uh, blade deployment. And that is the one, two, three, that's the fourth plate. Here we have blade deployment. And fire knock, dagger keeps rotating. And there's the fire knock dagger. And you know, what plate is that? And the sixth plate, still have full blade deployment on the thorn. And there it is making its way through the seventh plate. So, I mean, it. It did penetrate uh, the furthest so far, but we didn't have blade deployment for quite a while. So there it is on the uh, Thorn Archery Mechanical and the Dagger by Fire Knock. So hey guys, you just watched a couple slow motion videos of this penetration test and um, we thought it was pretty cool and even though we love our camera, we don't think it did a good enough job of slowing it down. I mean a thousand frames per second with an arrow going that fast, it's still going to look like a little bit of a blur. But we did also uh, show you a video of some of the penetrations and how the blades reacted with a couple particular heads that we had kind of issues with. Um, but let me first start off and say that this penetration test was kind of to simulate um, the broadhead's ability to go through bone, whether it be rib bone, leg bone, shoulder bone, whatever the case. Um, and, we, and we definitely think it's flawed a little bit. Um, as we investigated the different plates that were penetrated, the blades seemed to be doing a different thing. What I think was happening is this little void here was allowing the blades as fast as they were moving to move in a manner that they wouldn't if they were passing through a deer or an elk or a moose or whatever, whatever you're going to hunt. Um, so in the future I think we're going to change it. So I'm saying that this test was not perfect. Um, the broadheads that went through the plates that did not have open blades, we're going to penalize them um, for some of the plates that they didn't have the blades open on. Um, but for next year we're probably going to change it up a bit. Um, Instead of having a setup like this, I think we'll just get more heads and we'll start off probably with three plates, shoot the arrow, if the head goes through, great. That's telling us that it can penetrate three plates. 
then we'll throw a fourth one on there. We might step it up and uh, see how it performs then. So just want to tell you that, uh, you know what, we're, we're, we're doing the best that we can, but this has definitely was not perfect, but it should give you a pretty good understanding of the broadhead's ability to penetrate uh, bone. It definitely would. So hope you enjoyed it still. Take care.